Perfect. Recording in progress. All right, here we are then. Thank you so much, Henry, for uh, asking about this interview. So we can talk a bit about how you can. Yeah, so you go. I'm all ears. Okay, cool. So, okay, oh, Khan. Oh, Khan, okay. Who are you and what are your occupation? Yeah, so I'm Paolo. Nice to meet you, Paolo Abela. Uh, I'm the one of the co-founders of Ariokan, and I'm also a developer myself. I've been making games for the last 11 years now, uh, so lots of time, both single player and multiplayer. Ariokan is just the last one of those. And apart from this, I'm also uh, like a senior uh, senior um, software engineer at Unity, where I help developing multiplayer templates and samples, and also a multiplayer consultant for those studios that are looking for help making multiplayer games. Of oh, course. Cool. So you used to work at Unity? Yeah, I also work at Unity. Oh, you also work at Unity. So are yes. you still at, the, at Unity or...? No, no, no. I, I didn't start at Unity. Like, I started with my own gaming studio that was called uh, Starwork GC uh, 11 years ago. <laughs> so it was a studio that uh, lasted like seven years. And over time, it, we we grew up up to 56 people at our top moment. Uh, we were making different games. And also, we, we made one of the games that actually is where all uh, Ariokan universe comes from. And that game is Hunt for Gods, but it is now a dead game. You can find it on Steam, but it's like if you download that, you you, you can play it. Uh, it's just there for uh, history purposes. <laughs> Simply that. <laughs> so it's called Hunt for Gods or Hunt for Gods. Yes. Uh, let me let me write it in the chat. Hunt for Gods. I got like it. hunters. I yes. Uh, is it like a MOBA game? It was a Nero shooter game, so something like Overwatch, but there were like three teams and there were also PvE mechanics. So something like a precursor of maybe Hunt Showdown and, you know, the extraction shooters that are available nowadays. Something like that, more or less. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Okay, so... That question one down, right? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Okay. okay. Um, what is Arokai? What is Arokan? Yes. Yes. Okay. So Arokan is an online card game, like a collectible card game, where players can create their own cards. So that's the main, the main core of the game. Uh, but that's not the only part, of course. Like you can make your own decks. You can also play with some uh, iconic characters that are there. So there's more. Uh, besides creating your own cards, but the idea is that you are part of the game because you you help growing it in that in that way. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So, what inspired Arokai? So, what inspired Ariokan? Um, well, I would say that the core team that, that founded Ariokan uh, has been playing card games for a long time. Uh, uh, like, if I personally started playing Yu-Gi-Oh something like 20 years ago uh, at some point i stopped but like one thing i always felt as a card game player is that i wanted to you know create my own thing like i wanted to 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 make my deck with my own cards with my custom creatures heroes or whatever you no know? uh, and so like at some point i i started asking other people you know hey do you want to to try making a project that you know, it follows this philosophy of let's make a card game, but players are able to customize their deck in a way that, you know, it, it has not been possible until recently. So that I think that the background in card games is what uh, inspired me and the other founders to work on Arikan. Being awesome. players. Awesome. Um, did you have the idea for this game first or? Mm. So the, the, uh, I wouldn't say we had the idea first, uh, like when we started working on Arikan at the beginning of 2020, there were some other experiments around. Uh, for example, there was Collective, a uh, card game on Steam where uh, also their players could create their own cards, but it, it was like completely different concept apart from like in how they ended the, 
the creation of cars. So there was a voting system. Uh, people had to basically convince others about approving their cards. Uh, while in Ario, can we we took inspiration from that, but we changed the the direction completely. Uh, which is why in, in Arican, the cards are created immediately. There's no approval process, but there are some automatic checks that ensure that you make a card that is balanced uh, or legal in, uh, in that sense, or uh, without any, you know, um, vulgar language or racial slurs or these kinds of things. So um, that's, that's, that's it. I wouldn't say that we had the idea first. I guess there were maybe other games that I never heard of. Uh, but so far, I, I could say that we are ones that is still alive, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's awesome. I, I, I used to, I love Collector, but it turned out free to play did not work out for them and stuff. Mm. Right, yeah, that, that was one of the, the issues of the game. Let's see. What are the theme of the game? Why do you go with the themes? Uh, could you clarify a bit what you mean by themes in this case? Um, like, uh, in Elkhorn, you play as like gods, right? Mm. So why do you go yes. with, like, with the mythological theme? Yeah, yeah. so we, we started with uh, Romanic and, and Greek uh, mythology, for example. But uh, to be honest, we are not tied to, to anything specifically at the moment. So uh, the idea is that whenever we make a new god, regardless of like the religion or where it's coming from uh the important part is that it's fun to play so for example we started with greek and roman as i said but at some point we also started including some nordic gods that some players uh made um so we have loki for example uh we have skadi which i don't know if it's a real god or or not but like skadi is so... a real god ah okay yeah so it, it's evolving might it's have evolving. That. Yeah. So it's it's evolving a bit, and we're not like tied to any specific mythology, of course. Awesome. Let's see. What make Alcon card creator different? Hmm. So uh, you, we mentioned collective earlier, right? Yes. Uh, and for example, in collective, everybody could simply, you know, you, they gave you a, a card structure, so they just gave you the card uh, base, and you could write anything into into that. Um, and also decide like the mana cost and so on. So one thing that is very different here in, in Ariokan is that uh, you basically have bricks that you can combine, like, like Lego, for example, which are the effects or the keywords that you can put on the card. And based on what you put on the card, the cost of the card, like the resources that you need to uh, use to play the card while in a, in a match, uh, they change. So the, the thing that makes the Arikan Scarlator different is that it's auto-balanced, uh, which solves most of the problems related to approval and waiting for your card um, before, like, before it gets into the game, actually. So you can immediately start playing your cards. Okay, cool. When you play. Interesting. Let's see. Uh... Wouldn't like the auto balancing feature annoy or disappoint some player, especially those who came from Collective? I would say yes, of course. I mean, no, nobody's going to be... I mean, you, you can never satisfy everybody, right? There, there is always going to be somebody that disagrees with you. Uh, but the thing is that we found out that this seems to work really well uh, so far. So we, I reckon it's been in development for four years now. So we, we run several pre-tests with tournaments on a monthly basis, and the community is pretty active. So uh, we get a lot of feedback about the, the current editor and so on. Uh, yes, there are some people that pr would prefer having like something similar to collective. But the thing is that some, in, in, if you have complete freedom over what, how much a card costs, you can simply make like a zero mana uh, card that is super powerful. And that is not fun. Yeah, fun that will not be fun. Exactly. So to prevent that, you would have to implement an approval system. But the approval system means that you have other people judging your card, yes. deciding if it's good or not. Uh, and, and I don't feel like that. Drama. Exactly. And that's a lot of drama. Exactly. So we, we try to, to learn a bit from collective history and to avoid that drama because we don't want people to feel bad about you know their game or or jealous about other people's cards we want people to be able to express themselves freely that's the mission of, of Ariokan, like to uh, to bring freedom of speech into into card games uh, and so in order to to do that you need an impartial system you need something that 
simply is and that you cannot uh, affect in that sense. So um, as long as the rules allow you to make a card, you are free to make a card. Yeah, and very also clever that how you monetize it. Like um, instead of like making a card for free, you have to have divine scrolls, right? Yes. So the the thing is that um, right now in Ariokan to create to make a card, like to actually create a card, uh, which means inventing one, uh, you need to spend one scroll, which you can get from quests. Uh, in general, you can just play and and get scrolls, and and you are able to create the cards in that way. Uh, originally, it wasn't like that. Originally, we didn't have any scroll implemented, so you could simply go into the card editor and create any cards. But what we saw was that the quality of the cards was very low. So there were people just you know, creating trash cards because they were testing things out and so on. Uh, and so we wanted to limit that thing. We wanted you to put some, some thought into the cards that you make. It's about quality. Okay, so if everybody can make unlimited amount of cards, there will be somebody that just makes, let's say, a bot and creates all the possible combinations of cards. And most of them will be useless, and most of them will be just noise and annoying for players. So by having the scrolls, we are trying to, to solve the issue, and so far it seems to, to, to work it. <laughs> But you're also an American player. Like, uh, I don't know if you have any feedback about about that. Like, what do what do you think about this? I think it's a bad player, system. Right? The the score system. Uh, I know it's gonna get problematic, but I feel normal. Actually, it feel normal. And you say about like freedom of speech, right? And that's good, but you gotta restrict it somehow. You go to get freedom of chaos rather than freedom of speech. Hmm. Okay. So uh, for you, it, it feels like it's it's normal that it, that is there. Yeah. And that some. Okay. 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 But do you feel like it's a limitation to create your own? Uh, no, to create your not own a bad limitation. It's a good limitation. Ah, it's a good like, limitation. Like, okay. Yeah. Like, like if I make a card for free, then to get into the game, then it would be pretty unbalanced. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you. Let's see. Um, okay, here's the fun part. What is the Alicon early action? What fees and functions are coming to Alicon early action? Okay, so the early access of Ariokan uh, is the next phase uh, because right now Ariokan is in closed beta. Uh, so we it is accessible to players that, that come to the Discord uh, and they get a, a product key that they can redeem on the Epic Game Store uh, to play the game like in this phase. So the, the at the end of the closed beta, there will go there will be the early access or the also known as open uh, beta. So it's the next phase of Arc. Uh, what features and functions are coming to Arc in early access? So we haven't thought about the, those plans yet, like specifically because we're right now we are focusing on the closed beta, which should be over by June next year. Uh, so hold on, hold on to that. But I can tell you that. The, like what we have been discussing with the team is that we would like to add a single player mode. So something like, uh, I would say is late aspire, something like that, or something similar to the Legends of Runeterra's Path of Champion. I don't know if you ever, if you ever played that. Yeah, that's uh, my next so, question. What is the single player mode for, ah, okay. for Elkhorn? What, like, can yes. you hint or Sproyer? Yeah, yeah, so we haven't designed that yet because, as I said, it's the focus of the next year. So we, we haven't put much thought into that. But we had some discussions. So the idea is that we want people to be able to experience the, a, a different type of game within the game, right? So right now you can only play PvP. So you can play like the standard game where you go into a, into the matchmaker, you find somebody to play with, and you compete for the leaderboard. Uh, and in the meantime, like you figure out what the meta is, how to break it, and you make new cards and you invent your decks. So that's that's one experience. That's an experience that appeals to some players, of course. Uh, but we also want to, to help other people enjoy the Arikan philosophy of you make your own cards. And in this case, it will be you leave the adventure, you know, with your own with your own decks, with your own characters and so on. So instead of competing with other players, you will be playing against a computer uh, in a story. Okay, so there will be like a path that is on you, and you choose where to go. And you build your deck 
along the way. So uh, maybe you face some bosses, maybe you face some specific enemies of a specific faction. Maybe you play the story of a, of a legend or of a god. So the idea is that you will be in that way, you will learn more about the Arikan universe. You will learn about more about the story, the lore, the characters of the game. And we, and, you know, and in the meantime, you will figure out how to build your deck to face the challenges of that specific story and game mode. Does this answer the, the question? Yeah, that sounds good. Like that good answer. Let's see. Okay. But, um, why are you trying, uh, okay, so the next question is, why are you trying to uh, add voice acting and is it necessary? So voice acting, voice acting is, I feel like it's pretty important, you know, because, you know, when you, when you watch a film, uh, you get attached to the characters because they speak, you know, because they say something. Uh, so having, like right now, uh, voice acting is not in Ariokan yet uh, for, for most things, at least. And so the idea is that we want you to to relate to some characters. Like we want you to be to become attached to to the legends that you play, to the gods that you play. So so you can establish a bond, right? And when you summon a legend, you feel like it's your legend. Like when you summon Mia or when you summon Weezo, uh, which are some iconic characters of Arikan, like you want to feel like a healer, or you want to feel like you are a powerful wizard that throws uh, dark sphere energy at your opponent. So it's a bit hard to do that if those characters don't speak, right? Because you don't get uh, their personality, you don't get why they're there, you don't get the relationships that they have with each other. So I feel like voice acting for Arukan is very important because it will allow you to do to do those things. Um, and it is necessary because otherwise it's like watching a film where you only hear the sounds and the soundtrack, but the characters don't speak. Oh, yeah. So uh, it, it's yeah, it's a bit harder. I mean, it's not impossible to get attached to that. There are games that don't use uh, yeah, like, don't so, some exception, like some of the chaos, like some of the gods are like player created, right? Sorry, can you repeat the question, please? Okay, um, some of the gods are like player created, right? Some of the gods and legends are player created. Yes, uh, yeah. right so, now it's possible to create those when you when you win a tournament or when you are the best in the leader. Yes. Yeah, so, how will voice acting work for them? Well, uh, when, whenever we make a god or a legend with a, with players, we ask them to describe a bit of the personality of the of the characters. So we will make the voice acting based on uh, on that. So if you tell us that your that the character that you designed is you know a powerful uh, priestess of of Zeus uh, and that it's good and it's loyal and that she she wants to help. Uh, people, then we'll try to to find a voice actor that is going to be able to represent that uh, okay. in the dialogues. That's awesome. And since you're like in the industry for so long, that means you have that connection with voice actors, right? Uh, since I'm in the industry for so long, sorry, can you repeat the, the second yeah, part? Yeah. Of the since you're in the industry for so long, that means you have a lot of connections, right? About my connections. Okay, so like for example, in in Star Wars for Hunt for Gods. Uh, we worked with some uh, with some voice actors to uh, to make the the voices of the characters. It was a fun experience also because some of the team members actually went for uh, for voice acting, and then we changed their voices with some filters and so on. So we were able to give the voice uh, like the voice of some of the team members to uh, to the to the characters to the yeah to the characters of the game. Uh, but we also had. Like we also managed to work with some professional voice actors at the time, um, both juniors and both more seniors that helped us navigate this uh, this this scene. Right now, um, we're looking like at, at several options for voice acting. So, uh, because nowadays you know technology evolved, uh, also the market changed and so on. So nowadays there are several options. There are some voice actors that you can hire and they make the voices for you. There are some voice actors that have already made some packs of uh, voices uh, that are a bit more generic but you can buy and support them so you you can use the voices that they that they already prepared or you can also try to generate them with ai but they feel way less natural yeah. uh, of course right also, at least at least for now yeah also that's probably the next option um what's your opinion on ai generated content or do you worry about the, ne the negative reputation ai generated artwork or voice acting 
Hmm. So let's start with the last, the second part. So the, the thing about bad reputation, there are like two different schools of thoughts here. Like some people think that AI generated artworks are bad uh, because of uh, several reasons. Some other people, mainly because many of the softwares that allow you to generate AI images are allegedly uh, trained on um, copyrighted images and so on. Um, so that, that's one thing. But there are also other people who think that this is fine or that found uh, that models can be simply trained with, with the artworks that the company owns. So th this is the, the thing. Uh, but not not everybody thinks that AI artworks is good or that it's uh, AI artwork is bad. Uh, as concerns Arikan, it would be very hard. And I, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't say very hard. I would say impossible for a game like this to exist without AI artworks because, as I said, there is no approval process. So the thing is that when you create a card, it is immediately available. And if you had to wait for an artist to make the card for you, I mean, yeah. you will never create a card. Like you would have to wait days, yeah. weeks, or whatever. Yeah, While AI, AI, AI art allows you to immediately make an artwork for your card in a few minutes. Uh, we also know people who spend hours making the, the AI generated uh, images of the of their cards because they want they really wanted to nail the essence of what they were trying to make. So I think it's a blessing in our case. And it's the only thing that allows for customization here. Because even if we add the budget, it would also be, which we don't have, by the way, to make artworks for 4,000 different cards, which are yeah. the ones that exist nowadays. It would also be impossible for, because it takes so much time. While with AI-generated artworks, everybody can express themselves freely immediately uh, in that sense. Okay. All right, that's good. That's great. Let's see. Um... Okay, uh, I got a few more questions. Okay, are you okay with mm -hmm. our company being a buy to play game? Uh, yes, so buy to play means that instead of being free to play, where you play for free and then you have to deal with microtransactions all the time, buy to play means that you pay a small amount of money uh, upfront when you when you buy the game and and then like you ju you just play it and you're not bombarded with microtransactions all the time. So I I definitely prefer the buy to play approach. I know it can scare some people off, like it can scare some people because they they have to put money up. You know, they, they can simply try the game, but they have to pay before they can play it. Um, which is a problem that can be solved, by the way, if you release a demo or something like that. Yeah, but in general, I yeah, a demo exactly. Uh, but in general, I I prefer to make a buy to play game uh, where we don't bombard you with uh, microtransactions. So you simply buy, I don't know, scrolls if you really want to speed up your your the development of your deck and so on, uh, because you want to make way more cards than the scrolls that you get from for free allow you to do. Uh, instead of like, you know, releasing a free to play game and then trying to get your money all the time, because the problem with free to play game is that one. Like, okay, it's free. But then they have to monetize and then they have to monetize in every single way possible. And it becomes like, I feel like it becomes oppressive for the player to deal yes. with battle passes, uh, progression, microtransactions, you know, all these kinds of things, uh, the, buying cosmetics on top of that and so on. So, I mean, I'm for giving you a game that you pay a nice price for. Um, and then if you want to, to look cool, you buy cosmetics. Uh, if you want to play, you know, if you want to create tons of cards, you if buy some scrolls. Like support Otherwise, you, right? And we want like to support yeah, you. If, and if you want to support the game, you can you can buy that, but it's not necessary. Like once you buy the game, you can simply play it, and you can get all the scrolls that you want just by playing. Uh, we also have like one thing in Arukan that is the weekly vault, and we decided to put into the weekly vault, uh, which gives you rewards based on how much you played. We decided to put in the last level uh, the coins, which are the currency that you currently have to pay for. If you if you want to buy cosmetics and so on, you buy coins, and then with the coins you unlock the stuff. So the idea is that if you play enough, you can also get the premium currency, so you don't have to spend anything for uh, for unlocking your skins or icons or remotes. But then everything is free if you play enough. Yes, I, I also like the, the weekly vault. That's a good idea that you that that Lune Tower have too. Legend of Lune Tower. Yes. And it's good Correct. to see more card game take ideas from that. 
Yeah, in relation to Renatella, had a lot of good ideas, a uh, lot of good ideas that we took inspiration from. Like we we had a look at that. Of course, we studied it. We studied a lot of other games. Uh, we tried to understand why they were doing some things, uh, which is pretty common if you are in the like in any industry. You look at other uh, what the other people are doing, what the other projects are doing, and you try to understand. Okay, why did they do this? Uh, we agreed with them on a lot of things. We disagreed with them on a lot of things as well. <laughs> That's why we are a different game. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it, it, it's a, yeah, I agree with you that that was a pretty pretty interesting uh, feature that we came up. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, actually, um, how long do you expect like our con games to last? Like from ten to twenty minutes? Uh, a single match. You see, you mean like yeah, when you play match. with another person? Yeah, yeah I would say I would say from five to twenty minutes ideally. So it really depends on the type of, of decks you're playing. If you're playing aggro, you, you, you tend to win by turn three, four. So it could be it could be faster. If you try to play control, of course it's you know it can get longer. So it depends on your strategy as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, this question just came back to me. Um okay, so do you want to support Alcon for a long time? Like is it like a live service game or is it like would this game have a set number of updates? We want to make a live service game. So we, we are already, you know, we have been working on this for four years already. And the idea is that Arukan is here to stay. So as long as our budgets uh, allow that to do, uh we want to work on Arukan, we want to make this game the card game. So, which is why we we are trying to communicate our plans. We are thinking about you know uh, even after the what will happen after the open beta. Thinking about single player. Thinking about mobbing. Okay, so right now you can mod the game. For example, you can make your own rules when you play with friends. So the idea is that in the future, uh, Ariokan will become a card game where you can also not only make your own cards, but you can also make your own game mode. And then you can have fun in your own way. So the idea is that this project is going to to increase, uh, like in insights and in updates and so on in the future, especially on the cards editing side. So talking about collective, right? You mentioned collective a few times. Yeah. Uh, collective had a very nice cards editor in the sense that it was super free. Uh, like it, it gave a lot of freedom. Uh, so people could like connect different parts of a car, different effects, different conditions, and so on. Yes. So the idea is that we get to that level without, you know, um, without having to to remove the automatic balancing and so on. So it's something that takes time. But the long term plan is that uh, people will be able to not only connect, not only use the bricks like Lego, but to also make the bricks so make the effect make the keywords and combine it so lots of plans lots of things to do <laughs> and we don't plan to we don't plan to stop soon so. <laughs> amazing that's great yeah. um let me think um uh, i think i have one more question um if someone was going like i do get into the game industry what do you what do what tips or or tricks do you have for them uh, can you can you repeat the question, please? Okay. Um, if someone were going like into the game industry, what trip, what tri tips or tricks you have for them? Hmm. Okay. So for somebody going into game the game industry, what tips or tricks I have for them? Yes. Yes. Uh, it's tough. <laughs> so <laughs> prepare for the prepare for the you know for a long run. Uh, depending on the type of game you are making, if this is your first game, try. Sorry, try not to do a multiplayer game. Multiplayer games are extremely hard to do. Mm -hmm. uh, they uh, they require a lot of expertise. Uh, and I'm saying that as a person who has done multiplayer games for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. So it's not an easy, it's not an easy run. That doesn't mean that you have to be discouraged. Uh, simply start from something that is simple. Okay, try to do something small, small that is fun, because that's what helps you understand how to release like how to make a game for the commercial market. Uh, so the, the ideal thing is start small and try to release something that is fun. Because in this process, you will get a lot of experience. You will understand a lot. Everybody starts by saying, I want to make the next Skyrim. No, you don't <laughs> want to make the next Skyrim. No. You have no idea what that implies. Okay, <laughs> I want to make the next Fortnite. No, you no. don't. That, that, that's um, a way to, to never get something. No. 
Yeah, exactly. So try to make something small. And then after that, maybe you can think about, you know, making something multiplayer if you want to go multiplayer. I'm here for uh, 12 if you want. <laughs> uh, but in general, try to, you know, stay small and deliver something. That's the, the first step. Okay. Uh, I think there are the questions I have for you today. Um, do you have anything to say or... Yes, yes. So uh, just for, for those viewing this interview, uh, if you want to play Aryokan while it's still in the closed beta, uh, you can try that from the Epic Game Store. Like you just Google Aryokan uh, and you will find either the website or the Epic Game Store. Both have uh, a button to go to Discord. So once you're on Discord, you get a code and you can try the game. And keep in mind that all the progress that you make will be kept. So every scroll that you unlock, every card that you make, Nothing is going away. Everything is going to stay. Uh, so have fun. <laughs> and if you have any feedback, please reach out on Discord because that's where we are all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. I thank you, all Pablo, right. for the interview. Thank you so much. And thank you for the time, Henry. It was a pleasure. And yes. yeah, see you around, man. <laughs> see you around. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.